Hello, my beautiful friends. Are you ready to start finishing this? Um, I have everything and I have told you that I'm going to use this, but if I will be able to sit on the chair long enough, I'm going to do one more thing. If not, I'm not going to even talk about it because I don't want to um, get you all frustrated. So, last time I showed you uh, that the little skulls for the earring needed a, a hole drilled. Hi, Robin. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Judy. And then um, you needed to put the little eye screws in with some glue. And I used the Loctite glue, and they are well nice and glued in because they've been in for a week, obviously. And then I told you that for the skull itself, I'm going to use this uh, stamp. Hi, Christy. Uh, because it will be uh, much easier to do something using a stamp. Remember that the, the whole idea in this uh, live broadcast is to make something that would be simple enough for people to follow along without being too advanced in the whole polymer clay thing. So what I have here is a piece of scrap in which I mixed a little bit of black and a little bit of silver. Uh, you don't have to use all sil silver and black. You can actually uh, use your scrap just for this. So I'm just passing it a couple times through the pasta machine because anytime the, the clay uh, sits for a while, it's a good thing to warm it up. Hi, Edna. Hi, Cecil. Hi, Tina. Hi, Chris. So I'm just passing it through on the thinner, uh, thickest setting. And then what I want to do, I want to do a good print. And uh, see all of these. Let me make sure because I found out how to work the camera focus out of Hangouts. I'm so good, huh? Okay, so let me focus this. So out of all of these, I think that the best to use would be this one. This one. Because it has the most uh, full thing. And it will be easy to carve around. Now, I am... Okay, I dropped something. Nothing of importance. Never mind. Okay, so I'm going to use this with a piece of wax paper. This doesn't even have to be very nicely cut because I only need a corner of it. And then I'm going to use my roller to get a nice good. Remember that I usually use the clay on top of the stamp or texture if possible. Hi, Carol. Because it's easier for me to get a clear um, imprint that way. So I'm going to gently carve this out and let me get this closer because now I can Okay, and see how I have all these here? 
and I'm going to go very nice and gently around with my exacto blade. and carve out the stamp. Are there any other ways of doing it? Yeah, definitely there are other ways and other stamps. And honestly, uh, I got from Badly Crafts an absolutely fabulous uh, Viva Decor um, mold sheet unfortunately apparently i bought the very last one on the market ever because they don't seem to be making it anymore and because uh, i've been trying and trying and trying to find it anywhere else because it's so gorgeous but Unfortunately, it was impossible to find. So I am just doing stuff with what can be found on the market. All right. Now let me grab my... And these are not well cut here. I did not even cut them properly. And this will take care of in a second. Okay, let me get the camera back outwards. And re focus the camera. Okay. Hi Edna. Hi Iman. Okay, now, let's place this, of course, we are not going to use all of it. We are going to use only partial, because we want to place it on top of the skull here. And yes, I know, I got a few messages that there's the bone missing here, and then, yeah, I know. The idea is to make it resembling a skull, making it fairly scary, and making it easy to make by people who are not very advanced in this. I know. No worries. Uh, so remember that we did a back on it. So all we need now is to add a little bit of bacon bond here. Oh yes, and I want to thank you the to thank the ladies who following my live yesterday went in and donated a little bit of money on my Amazon gift cards because that's going to help me tremendously in purchasing the new lights I have. Because remember I said that the only thing that I miss for good quality videos right now is better lighting. So you see I, I put the bacon bond only on the top here. <clears throat> And then I'm going to place, I'm gently rubbing, so even if I'm get, needing more than what I put there, it will still be on the back of this. So I'm going to bring it as low as I think it should be. So you see, it's more than half. That's why I did not cut it in half already. Uh, 
and gently gently fold it's a little bit chilly here fall has arrived already in oklahoma we are having a huge wave of storms actually it's not even even storms they are more like you know autumn rain because honestly i posted on my <clears throat> facebook page at around 10 o'clock i started watching this psychology show on youtube that honestly it was interesting but somehow i just drifted off good thing i woke up at 11 30 because my pain pill wore out and i didn't miss my <laughs> live broadcast and of course the rain falling so steadily and has a lot to do with it now yeah you'll say that it looks a little bit like a workman's cap well it won't in the end it won't so keep gently bending it <clears throat> so it will stay bent and remember uh generally speaking when you let the bacon bond or if you use liquid clay sit a little bit i don't have a good let me refocus this camera um it will thicken out and then things will stop sliding around <clears throat> excuse me there we go much better okay hi cherry i'm good uh usually when i put bacon bond on something i put the bacon bond and i wait a little bit and then i place the other piece of clay on top of it because that allows the bacon bond to thicken and as i said a lot of times your biggest problem is the the clay starting to slide around on the liquid and it's a you can make a mess okay so this is how much i want it now as i said i know it is fairly out there but here comes the part where we start doing just a tiny bit of sculpting and that is first of all i'm going to press a bit on these indented areas and mostly on the edges you want to hold a bit on it so it wouldn't slide while you're doing it if you put the clay too soon not allowing the bacon bond time to thicken out but you'll notice if you do this the bacon bond actually gets so thick that even if you don't bake after an hour or so it's hard to separate the the pieces and see i'm not going very deep but i am pressing enough to get the clay very well set on the baked part and i'm not going to even use all of it now i'm going to uh, you can get whatever is it that you use the uh, paintbrush handle as i said i found these little cane benders very useful to use as small rollers so i'm going to gently round up the edges i only need them to be a little bit rounded Just a little bit. So 
so that it won't stand out as flat on the base. Now, for the second part, what we are going to do around, let me get this again through the pasta machine. And I will do the same thing with the texture sheet, this time with the um, this part of the texture sheet. This is Elisa Pavelka. And after the video is over, I would put links both in my Amazon influencer store and in uh, Polyclay Play, where you can get it if you don't have it. Uh, this is just uh, scrap clay in which I put a little bit of black and a little bit of silver. I have um, an article, maybe I should uh, link it after the live is over, on my website that tells you what combination of colors you can use to imitate patina in such a way that you only need to put the metallic part you don't have to worry about using all kinds of uh, uh what you call it um your paints and chalk pastels and other things to create patina to antique uh full metal so with scrap clay the regular mud clay if you want to do ancient silver you just add a little bit of black and a little bit of silver clay. And that is enough to, number one, darken it enough, and number two, give it a little bit of sparkle because when you have um, antique silver, you have, even in the dark grayish areas, there will still be just a tiny bit of uh, a sparkle in it. It's not fully black. The only time it's fully black is when you have the Native American uh, traditional jewelry because they use a specific oxide to make it black in certain areas. You're talking about Pardo, Robin? Where are you located? Because the platinum is not available in the U.S. anymore. There is a, a petition that we started online. We are trying to get a thousand signatures. I am going to post the link to it after the video is over. Uh, right now, uh, the only colors that are still existing in the U.S. you can find that Polyclay Play, the cheapest. And uh, myself, for the colors that Trish doesn't have anymore, and the uh, uh, Viva Decor representative doesn't have anymore, uh, I buy them from a store in the UK called Badly Crafts that has very, very sensible prices and a very, very sensible shipping. And I will post the links for that as well. All right, so. I'm going to again carve this but uh, yeah platinum was one of the first ones to go especially after I did the mother of pearl um, tutorial okay let me see what you said because I took off my glasses Okay, so yeah, you cannot find it on uh, Polyclay Play. Let me actually put the Bodley Crafts in the 
chat so you can put it on your favorites. And uh, I'll do it on the Usually it's kind of hard to find stuff on their website, so just go all the way to the bottom and go by brand. Click on the Viva brand. And then you'll find the Pardo. They have all kinds of stuff that I haven't even heard in the US of. And I got some stuff from them. Okay, Pardo clay colors, professional art. Uh, and you can find the... Um, the platinum both in the jewelry and in the mica. And there's another color that's very similar to the platinum that's called Mother of Pearl, but that one has a little bit more iridescence. Okay, let me get the... I'm not sure if she has the mica clay. Professional art, yeah. Oh, let me see if she has any more that mold. No, no, she doesn't. She has all other kinds, but not that one anymore. Oh, well. Uh, transparent, professional. So, no, she doesn't have the mica line at all. I'm going to just put the jewelry platinum up. No. Oh, I'm I'm listing. Yeah, I'm I'm listing the UK site. This is the direct a link to the platinum that's on the website and the link to the jewelry clay. Let me see, maybe because she lists it as part of the colors, so maybe she has the mica at the end no anyway this is the jewelry and you can see that the prices are fabulous i mean i see the garnet listed for a dollar 69. so yeah it is uh she has very good prices and i can tell you that her shipping is not bad at all uh you can ask deborah because uh, she purchased some as well from Badri Crafts. And uh, even if it is an international shipping to the US, it's still feasible. And she has colors that you cannot and you couldn't find in the US again. I know I, I still have to update the colors thing on my website. I have everything baked. I just need to take the photos and upload them to the few colors that... Uh, are not there because I got what I was missing from Budley Crafts. And yeah, you might want to talk up on that because I'm going to tell you a secret. One of the projects I'm going to do for Christmas will be a jewelry box. And I thought really hard, what should I make it out of? Of course, you'll be able to make it out of other things if you want, not necessarily. But I thought that made in Mother of Pearl, it would look absolutely fabulous. And it will be a jewelry box made without the baking base left in. So I'll show you how to create it just with the separate walls, how to put together the walls and maybe even I'll see, maybe we'll make it uh, with a hinge, with a hinged lid. Okay, and I'm going to do this one as well because I think I'm going to use the edges 
on each side so they would look symmetrical And if you were wondering, yes, I'm holding my tongue out like a kid when I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. All right. Now. Now, if we go like this, it's going to come kind of somewhere here. So... Let's get this in half. And one thing I told you before that I prefer to do whenever I'm putting um, raw clay over baked clay is to put a little buffer of clay so that I would even out everything that's here so that my so-called bezel would fit perfectly. So for this, I'm going to take a, a small piece of clay and I'm going to string it out. And if you are wondering, yes, I made this yesterday and I left it out so that it got a, a tiny bit drier, it leached out a little bit. It wasn't on paper, it was on my tile. But it didn't dry out too much. I still, as I said, I still went with it through the pasta machine, but it became a lot more firm. Um, and that allowed me to have much better prints on my texture sheet. So you don't want to do this with a clay that's too soft if you want nice prints. Okay, now let's grab some bacon bond and get it here. I'm going to get a new bottle soon. Okay, and I finished my, I'll show you here in a minute, I'll finished all my experiments with the so-called glass leaves. And I ordered, I ran out of something and I ordered it off of Amazon, it's going to be here Tuesday, so hopefully Wednesday you'll have the tutorial on how to make them. And let me put this up and then I'll show them to you. Of course, they are still raw, they are not mounted yet. So, I'm taking my little strip of clay. And I'm placing it all around. I'm going to make everything nice and smooth here so that when I place the bezel, it will fit perfectly. And of course, I will trim off the excess.
because you don't want this to be neither too thin nor too thick. You just want all this area to be perfectly smooth so that when you place the textured part, okay, oh, no, it's right here. I think Whisper's dreaming if you hear any. Mm, mm, Whisper is dreaming. I have some extra bacon bond. Oh God. Okay. And now a very gently I'm going to put some bacon bond on the back of the textured strips. Just a second. I need to go wake him up because he's having a nightmare. Whisper. I guess he was fighting something. And I hate to hear him being so upset. Okay. Hi, Aung San Amun. I'm good. I'm not going to place it all over it because I'm not going to use all of it. And yes, somebody asked me before, well, if I have clay with bacon bond on it, can I just mix it in the scrap clay? Will, will the bacon bond affect it anyway? No, it will not. You can safely put it back in the scrap clay. It will not make it stick to anything out of ordinary. Yeah, he is really upset when he's having bad dreams. Oops, okay, that was my finger. It wasn't supposed to get. Okay, so very gently make this kind of fit in there. Let me make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing. Because I know that I went a little bit off camera. And there. Okay. And there we go. Okay, so fit this end. And then even if he, it gets past, it's okay. Just make sure that you have the proper distances here. That's what you're interested in. The rest we are going to trim off. Let's place the other one. Let me just get to the other screen. So I cannot see the chat anyway, but I can see the screen now with the bigger monitor and make sure that I'm not going off.
it's okay here we are going to put another little piece of clay to make the a perfect seamless transition just make sure that on both sides <clears throat> it's the same so it will look like an ancient warrior skull of some sorts with a helmet on very gothic -y. going to very gently and holding on to it start trimming the excess And I'm holding it with my forefinger so it doesn't start sliding around while I'm cutting. And I'm going to kind of flush this here, make a seamless transition. Okay, now this went a little bit too far in, bring it all to the edge here, I have a bad cut here. Now, you know what I normally use to even out everything, and I'm still without my glasses, so I can see what I'm doing here without getting off camera. So, first of all, I'm going to do this. To even everything out nicely. Because the alcohol will dissolve the superficial uh, layer of clay and you can smooth it out perfectly so you'll have no seam the liquefied clay will go in the crack that still exists between the bezel and the initial backing and the same for this one Just keep rubbing until the whole surface is nicely smoothed out. And then of course you need to wait for it and we'll uh, smooth it out one more time before uh, putting it in the oven. Now I have to wait a little bit for the alcohol to be fully dissolved. Let me check the chat. Yeah, it's supposed to look like armor. It's supposed to look like an ancient warrior skull. Okay, now I said that I am going to blend these things here. 
So again, let me get on the other screen so I can make sure that I'm not out of focus. And number one, very gently around this part up a little bit. all over you want to go all around with it and again i said i'm going to put two tiny pieces of clay there to cover the very small area that's not perfectly covered so i'm going to make a tiny rectangle of sorts that i'm going to cut in a diagonal and then use these wedges to place them right in here. So they would look like they are part of the whole design. Same for the one here. And this one here actually came out pretty good, so I'm going to just place it because there's one more spot here. Now, let's take care a little bit of these because see how they stop fairly abruptly and we don't want them to stop that abruptly we want to gently extend them So what I'm doing, I'm only following the design of the texture, I'm not doing anything else. It's not very difficult. I just have to be a little focused. And if it's very hard for you, you don't have to do it. Absolutely. Have to do it. It will be fine even without doing it. Now I'm going to show you something new and I will be doing a review on it really soon. Hopefully it is coming week. I know that I've been showing you the those three lines of the Prima Marketing uh, waxes, the Art Alchemy, the Metallic, and the Opal Magic. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Joachim. Uh, they came up with uh, another line of waxes that to me it seems like the same as they did with the IOD molds and they came up with the redesign molds. 
they kind of ripped off the art alchemy waxes and they came with their own wax that's called redesign i have gotten four different colors and the only one that i am um excited about is the silver the other colors all have some issues and i will talk about that in the review but the um, silver which actually is called shiny star um is the real sterling silver look it is not the um antique style oxidized silver look that the art alchemy metallic old silver looks like it has a few cons though if you put it on the baked clay uh when you're rubbing most of it will come off so it needs to be put on when the clay is raw and baked with the clay it will still come off just a little bit when uh, buffing it but there will be still plenty enough to look beautiful so this is it it's called the uh, shiny star and you will see the difference actually i'd better get a little bit of the gold silver to show you the difference and they even tried to imitate the <laughs> nice fragrance only that the redesign prima ones Think of essential, some kind of poor quality essential oil mixes. While these ones have a beautiful fragrance, uh, they are double the price, but as you can see, they are kind of like triple or even four times the uh, quantity. So, no, no, it's just out of my own mind. But as a game online RPG players player, I have a lot of i have seen a lot of necromancers okay so let me put the a shiny star on here and i will cover the old silver with the sign shiny star so it will all look the same and i know it's not very shiny but remember it's the same as with the Art alchemy ones, until you start buffing it, you cannot see the real beauty of it. I'm trying to get a little bit of the middle of these because that's how it would look like, obviously. Okay, now I'm going to do one side of the chin with the see you already can see the difference with the old silver and then the other side of the chin with the sign shiny star so you can see can you see the difference the only thing that it has it it is a little bit more of a cold color so it doesn't have the very very subtle goldish glow that silver has but see that it is a fairly big difference let me cover the old silver and i'll continue doing it with the new silver and yes uh, you can find this on polyclay play but as I said, right now, I'm still experimenting with them, uh, but I am enthusiastic at this point only about the this color, this specific color. I still have to try because they didn't have any when I ordered, but they have some black metallic and iridescent in this line of waxes, and that is definitely something that I want to try. So I had, uh, I got a light gold, I got a interference blue and a regular dark blue. Because I wanted to see the differences between the this redesign line and the old art alchemy lines. 
as I said, they are double the price, so they are like $13 for this, but considering how much it is compared to the other ones, I find it's a fairly reasonable price. It's way more than you can find in a Gilders paste or even in an Inca gold. I'll grab uh, some of those so you can see the differences. But definitely, I mean, if you put it on already baked clay, you definitely want to put it back in the oven because otherwise it comes off quite a bit when you're buffing it. Okay, so here we are. Get a little bit more on here. And I have a little issue with it being a tad dark. So let me see what I can do about it. Okay, let me check that. You're most welcome, Robin. Thank you. I think that this area needs just a little bit of uh, lightening up, just a pinch. I'm trying to figure out what can I use with, for it. I just want this area. No, I think I'm going to just sand it a bit once it's baked and that should bring it up. But yeah, there, there we are with this. And you can, if you want, you can place little so-called helmets on these little guys too, but I will just leave them the way they are for now. And let me take this to the oven. And then it depends. It depends. And let's see if I can sit for long enough to do the other piece that I promised. Okay, so the issue was somebody, and you know how much I love challenges, somebody actually messaged and asked me, can you do something with the skull-like thing that would be both gothic-y and elvish? Now, that's quite a challenge, you have to admit. That is a fairly good challenge. So, let me see if I can do anything like that. So I'm going first to get with this again through the pasta machine. And I'm going to get a base for this. Actually, I think I want it a little bit thinner. Okay. So, I'm going to put this on a piece of paper. will be more or less rectangular. Okay. 
Let me see if I have any more of them. And I have here some extruded clay of this. Let me put the thin one to the side and work a little bit with the thick one. So let me get this closer. It, it comes up just a little bit, Joachim, not a lot. Just a little bit, but uh, it still can be buffed beautifully. So it's not too bad once it's uh, baked. Okay, now let's see how we can do something gothic -y. And now remember, I am now on my other screen, so I cannot see the chat because I want to make sure that I am in why I cannot do that in the live live is because there's a delay. I always set up a delay because if I don't set up a delay, then the quality of the video has to suffer a lot. OK, so first let me cut two pieces that would be pretty much the same length. So these are extruded on the thinnest. It's one that's got like one single very thin uh, hole die. And another die that has like five thicker holes. This is the five thicker holes. But the other one is just with the smallest hole in the middle die on the extruder. I'm going to try to make this as symmetrical as possible. And this would be a little bit too big, so no, that's not going to stay like this. It's too big. Let's go a little bit smaller. I mean, remember, I do like <clears throat> certain statement jewelry, but Generally speaking, I'm not fond of cowbell jewelry. It has to be in an extremely well good taste. I know I'm not Vogue. I'm not any kind of established jewelry critic, but that's my opinion and my taste. Relatively okay. And I know one of these days I'll do because a lot of people are asking me to do that kind of jewelry that's got all kinds of swirls and spirals and, you know, made with little strings. I will do that one day.
And yes, I know this one, the inside part is not super <clears throat> symmetrical. I did not have the intention to make it super symmetrical. So generally speaking, what I'm doing now, I'm creating a type of uh, flourish. That hopefully looks a little bit elvish. Okay, stay there. Sorry, I usually have a lot of discussions with the clay and I'm trying to make it do what I want. Okay, and this is a very long string. No, it looks like embroidery with clay. That's the intention.
you know, it's so silent and I forgot to talk and I'm not watching the chat because I have to pay attention to this. Okay, you weren't supposed to come off. See, the thing is that I'm not pressing them uh, completely down at this point. Because I might want to do a little bit of crossover or something. And I don't want them to be perfectly stuck to the base. And you'll see why in just a minute. Okay, I think that this is good. Let me get my little string back. I'm going to get a little, I make a little tiny itty bitty skull. Let me catch up with the chat. Okay. Hi, Donna. Yeah, you almost did. Yes, you can, but differently. Uh, if you look, I made, and I might think about uh, doing something like that, but I actually made, uh, the, if you look at the clay in laying clay tutorial that I made a while ago, a while ago, you can do that using stamps easily. You don't even have to use all this kind of filigree. You can use just a plain stamp. It will work just fine. Okay. This should be good. Okay, so I'm going to attempt to make a super tiny, super, super, super tiny skull. Let's see how well I'm going to do. Okay, so this is the Clay. Yeah, I do need my little sculpting thingy. If I can even find it somewhere. I'm at the point where I'm working on so many things at the same time, it's hard to find something on this table. Actually, I only need the front of it. And this is going to be super tiny. Okay, I only need the front of it. Can you even see what I'm doing there? Maybe I should make it also the silver thing instead of white, but then it will be hard to see it on the... Okay. Oh. The nose. the eyes and I'm going to 
and take it probably after it's baked. And then the teeth. Because it's just so tiny. Okay, it's a little bit smiling, but. Can you even see it? It's a little scalp. And I'm going to move this a bit. And that's the reason why I didn't get them all already in place. Oh, come on. You shall do what I say. I am the master. Because if you don't, I'll throw you away. Oh dear, it doesn't want to be thrown away. Uh -huh. Here we go. Now I can trim this. First I can flatten everything in place. Now it is okay. Sorry I hit the camera. That's the main problem when you're doing miniatures, is to be able to tape in such a way that people can see what you're doing so they can repeat it. I'm going to cut it a little bit like this because once it's baked, I'm going to place it on a backing and that's going to make it look nicer, the edging I mean. Oh, and to answer another question, I got a few questions on where can I get the rod that can make parallel lines? And the uh, answer to that is if you're in the US, you can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I'll show you one in a bit. Let me first put some silver on this uh it's around 95 cents and then for larger lines you can use a big screw but i'm going to not do all of it just the uh, essential ones and the rest I will do after it's baked. I don't want to put any silver on the all righty and the oven dinged so I'm going to go and grab the skull 
Oh, come on. So I think that it looks both Gothish and Elvish. But I will work more on it. So yeah, something like this. It's kind of like a leaf and kind of like a something. And once it's baked, I will antique it. Okay, hey, let me catch up. That sounds good. Okay. Let's see. Who said good night? I don't know who said good night. Uh, Rosie, good night. That's uh, interesting, but you're uh, you're losing quite a bit of time. Hi, Colleen. I told you, look, or try to find that clay in laying clay tutorial and you'll see what I'm talking about. Yeah, I will look for that, David Nichols. And that sounds pretty nice. That sounds pretty nice. And that would be probably a, a good a solution for somebody who asked me if it would be possible to remove the uh, a satin slice, slice inlay from the stamp without using clay, just the inlay. So that might work for her too. Hold on, let me go bring the skull and put this in the oven. <laughs> No, the skull is super hot, you can imagine. But I wanted to show you how uh, how already the wax gets a little shinier with the baking part. Just before it got, because it got baked. Let me see. See how it's already shinier than it was when I put it on. So what I will be doing with this, as I said, I'm going to use, once it's cooled off, I'm going to use a bit of sandpaper here to make this area just a bit lighter. And then I will buff this, then poke a hole here and add one of these eyelets. And then it would be perfect to put on a leather cord and worn, not just for Halloween, but for whomever likes more gothic type jewelry. And you can see it comes off. Of course, you can buff it and then you can cover it with varnish or something. That's the only issue that I have with it. Uh, with this color specifically. With the other colors, I have way more issues. And when I do the review, I'll uh, explain. 
So, yeah, I will post photos of both pieces, this one and the little elvish leaf. And this probably with the... And maybe not, but you know how I put short, very short videos on the Facebook page so that you'll be able to see the full results of this. And then, um, I don't know, why don't you write in comments what Halloweenish thing you want to do for next Sunday? That would not, uh, I mean, what you have to think is that it has to be something that would not require repeated uh, baking because you know I'm trying to to get into like a one hour one hour and a half uh, interval of time and something they could do even if it is a cane that you you would like seen but something Halloween themed be it a piece of jewelry be it a little sculpture be it whatever and uh, leave me the feedback in the comments and we'll go from there for the next couple of Sundays because we still have quite a little bit of time before Halloween is actually here. So thank you so much for uh, being here and I hope you'll try your own little skull thing. Again, I'm going to put the links for this uh, texture if you don't have it already. And um, I'll be waiting for your feedback and see you next Sunday. Thank you so much again and have a wonderful Sunday, what's left of it. Thank you. Happy clean. <laughs>